one of the reasons why I chose to study Facebook instead of something like, uh, you know, well, I guess MySpace or MSN, instant messaging, or any of these other sort of web phenomena is because of uh, Facebook's ability to transcend different spheres. And I think part of that has to do with the technology, the, the convergence behind it, where um, it's this idea of bringing together different aspects of uh, the web, including things like photo sharing, you know, how it does a better job at Flickr, at being Flickr, but then also introduces links to Flickr. Um, it's got a bit of online dating to it, media sharing, all these different features. And in addition to that, um, because it started off as an academic in, uh, endeavor, you know, uniquely for college students, but sort of gradually bridged out to the workplace, and then you introduced regional networks, and now you have high school students and grandparents and your employers and you know your old buddies from uh, from elementary school all sharing one space um, the conversations and the exchange of information that takes place on Facebook it's really a matter of you know having all these very strange bedfellows sharing this one space and I mean you find in the popular press people talking about those kinds of anxieties where you know a conversation between themselves and say a loved one then is made available to an employer and then you know you're at you're at work and your boss asks you oh well I see you had a hot date last night uh, so I think that's sort of you know representative of the kinds of anxieties and the kinds of uh, excitement that surround uh, using Facebook just in the past few months every time I log on to Facebook there'd be some new add-on or application or, or um, something that would just really change the way you could potentially use Facebook. And one recent example that's stuck in my mind is this one called People You May Know. It turns out it's actually not unique to Facebook. Um, I think it was LinkedIn, I believe it's LinkedIn, uh, had a very similar feature by, you know, by the exact same name that does the same thing. And so what this People You May Know feature does is it goes through your friends lists and then it goes and takes a look at the friends of your friends and through some algorithm, it determines which ones you either should already know and add or should probably get to know a little bit better because, hey, you know, you have nine friends in common and even those nine friends aren't all one cluster, so like, what's going on here? Um, and I found, my own experience, I found this to be really interesting because you'd, you'd come across a few new people or you'd sort of, you know, get to know a little bit more about your own personal network. What's interesting about this technology is that it sort of automates the development of social networks. So not only does it add people or invite you to add people that you may not have bothered to add, you know, a friend that you just kind of neglected. So it sort of cleans up your social network to make it a little more representative of, you know, your actual network of friends. But it also then tries to automate the development of your, your friendship network, you know, suggesting that, well, you actually do have a lot in common with uh, this stranger over here, so why don't you poke them or message them or something? Um, and I think there's definitely some really, really interesting possibilities with that, but I think we're also seeing a lot of anxiety surrounding that in terms of, you know, this technology being increasingly automated, but there are certain things that people aren't prepared to to let go of uh, in terms of manual intervention. There's been a, a few sort of mundane examples about this, like, you know, someone's um, ex-girlfriend or something defriending them, and then they would only find out when it would then be suggested that they should refriend their ex-girlfriend. So obviously there's a few kinks in the technology, um, but then also there's this idea that connections, in terms of social connections, you know, putting on my sociologist hat, um, they're very vital, like in terms of, you know, finding, finding employment, uh, nepotism is still very abundant and, you know, it's, it's really who you know that helps you out in life. But these connections are not only a strength, but they're also a liability. So if all these people are, you know, increasingly automatically being tied to you and like, you know, you have a few friends who you, you're sort of questionable about and then their sketchy friends are then tied to you, um, and then you have to be accountable to that. And that's the thing, even though a lot of this is increasingly automated, uh, when we profile individuals or when we sort of scan their Facebook page and make uh, assessments about them, we usually still put the individual sort of the, the sort of acting agent in all of this. And um, I think we're going to have to, if this technology continues to be automated, we're going to have to seriously reconsider you know, how representative these profiles are of individuals and can you really 
make judgments in terms of are people, you know, worthy job candidates based on that.